Do you know how the tooling you're using is made? Well, you're in luck because we've travelled to Goering to follow the whole process. So, let's go and take a look inside. So we're here in the office where the sales team and the design team are all working. The design team is working on the bespoke tool which has been made on their own machines on the shop floor. Just like this. Okay, so firstly, we've got to start in the warehouse and this is where um, we get the stock. So any size tool that we've done in the design office, we come in here and look, open sesame. Um, here's all the stock, so as you can see, oh, let's wait for that to close, I think I've bummed it out. Oh. Um, we've got different stock in here, as you can see, and it all comes at 33 inch, and it can be cut down to the size of the tool. Sorry, let me get this back in there. Also as well, you can see these holes at the bottom, that's for um, your coolant, so we've got through spindle coolant, and as you can see, they've got all different coatings, so 14 mil, 15 mil, 12 mil, 10 mil, so any size tool that you want, they've got it right here. So when you've got the stock material, you need to get it cut to the perfect length for the customer. And for that, you need a machine like this that cuts it perfectly with no wastage. So now that we've got the desired length of material cut from that machine, we're gonna stick it on this Goering machine behind us, which is gonna create the flute tips on this piece of material. So what I'm going to show you here is just an example of what's going to go on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this piece of material in here and what it does is it steadies it. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have a um, grinding wheel which comes across and grinds the flute into the material. So what you're going to end up with is something looking like this. So obviously all different tools have different flutes, so it all, just, it all depends on what grinding wheel you are using. And I'm not sure how many grinding wheels there are on here, but there's over 10, so the possibilities are really endless. So this is the only part we can't actually talk about, and it's this machine behind me. It's a bit of an industry secret, and it's actually been nicknamed the glory hole. And that's all I'm going to tell you. So this is the prep room. We're going to be prepping the tools for the coating section next door. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be blasting air through these tools. And I don't know whether you've noticed, but I've got a nice white cotton glove. I want to make sure that these tools stay clean and I don't defect them in any way, shape or form. So after they've been blasted with air to make sure that all the dirt is off them, we're going to go through the coolant hole tester. This is going to blast coolant through the coolant holes to make sure there's no defects or any blockages within the tools for anything like that. Then we're going to go through to the big dishwasher. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the tools through this big dishwasher, uh, put the cycle on, and then once the dishwasher has finished, we get parts and tools that look like this. So the next part of the process is to put the tools into this contraption. This contraption loads all the tools up and it, then it is ready for the metal blasting. So once you're filled up with tools, you can put as many on there as possible, different sizes, different diameters. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through to the next process, which I find absolutely fascinating. And I'm just gonna open the door for you here. And now we're in the room with the two machines that actually coat the tools. And I wish Chloe would have been a bit quicker in that room because it's so hot in here. Now, these two machines are quite different and I'm going to see if you can guess which is the new one or the old one. But this machine has all these cabinets just to power it. The tools go inside and get coated. And then the machine behind you, if Chris will turn, is a lot smaller. And the only difference between them is that on this machine, you have to do all of the same coating. Where on this machine, you can actually divide it up and do four different styles of coating. As we're walking down, you'll see the parts that actually put the coating onto the tools. And I'm not even going to try and explain how that works because we'll be here all day. 
On this trolley, you'll see one of these which has actually been broken down and getting changed because, now let me pick this one up, this is a completely worn one. As you'll see, it wears pretty even all the way down. One of these will last around six months of coating. Over here, we've got the spares and repairs, but also the coating fixtures for this little machine. So like I said, you can coat four different styles of coating in one go. Over here, we've got the new, I don't even really know what to call them, but the new bases for the coating. The little machine, take the little one, and the machine to the end takes the bigger version. Now, you'll see in here, when, it, when, it, when tooling has been coated, it cannot be taken out of the machine until it's dropped to under 210 degrees because the air will actually hurt the coating. And what they do once it's, when it comes out, they bring it in and let it cool down. But also, there's quite a lot of space in here and that's because they've always got room for expansion. And let me tell you, it's so hot in here. So now we've finished every single process of the tool making and behind us, everything's gonna be ready to be shipped out, sent to the customers. Job well done. It is, and I've seen just how good these are. So I'm gonna take this one and see if I can break it. 